Indiana News Desk is made possible in part by Smithville Fiber Internet, Streaming TV, Home Security and Automation in Southern Indiana. More information at smithville.com. Maller Grodner Attorneys, providing legal services to clients and the community. Understanding, expertise, results. Bloomington and Indianapolis. LawMG.com. IU Alumni Association, connecting IU's network of alumni and sharing the Indiana spirit through scholarships, advocacy, and volunteerism. Alumni.iu.edu. IU Center for Rural Engagement, extending IU Bloomington resources to improve Hoosier lives in partnership with communities and organizations. Rural.indiana.edu. And by WTIU members. Thank you. Coming up on Indiana News Desk. It's been a week since the first case of coronavirus was confirmed in Indiana. Businesses, schools, medical facilities, and churches have all responded by increasing safety controls. Clearly, this coronavirus uh, has caused most of the world to be reactive. Coming up, what's the state's capacity to respond to the outbreak? If we're going to have this work, to have these individuals social distance, which means that you go home. We're devoting the evening to covering the outbreak. We'll have more on the symptoms, testing, and cure rates. All that and much more coming up right now on Indiana News Desk. Welcome to Indiana News Desk. I'm Joe Wren. And I'm Ethan Burks. Clusters of coronavirus are swelling across the country. Indiana has 12 confirmed cases, and those numbers are sure to rise as more tests are administered. Right now, the State Department of Health says they've tested 73 Hoosiers. Experts believe those positive cases are actually dramatically undercounted because the U.S. isn't testing enough people. But, Ethan, you know, part of this is how much caution is necessary, and it's a common problem. So how do you make sure you aren't taking unreasonable risk but also aren't going overboard? We don't want to do that here. So tonight we're discussing basic questions about the virus, and we have team coverage from across the state. Now we begin tonight with reporter Emma Atkinson uh, in Avon. And that's where the first two students tested positive for the virus this week. It normally takes Matt Noble about 45 minutes to get from his home in Fishers to his school in Avon, where he teaches high school history. Today, he's logged into his desktop computer, running his class from his home office. Modifying your lessons is a little tough because you don't get to see the kids. The materials you would have in class aren't there, but you can usually find something that to, to replace what you would have done. I don't know that it's as good as the interaction with the kids face to face, but I'm, I'm ready for it. It's the same system the district uses when there's a snow day. Right now, they're, they have a Google form that they're checking in. Um, then they're going to have um, a video that they have to go to and watch. Then they're going to have to read an article. I think I'm going to try to incorporate something with coronavirus today. Um, and then what they'll have to do is they'll have to answer some sort of uh, form. But it's supposed to line up with what we're doing. The first student who tested positive is enrolled at Hickory Elementary. At the beginning, only that school was closed until March 20th, but district officials expanded it because they said the web of people the affected students had contact with was very large. Indiana State Health Commissioner Chris Box encourages students to stay home and avoid contact while they are out of school. This is not a spring break where everybody runs out and goes to the mall, goes to the movies, goes to the theater, goes to, you know, whatever museum. We really need, if we're going to have this work, to have these individuals social distance, which means that you go home rather than being out in public because the point of this is to kind of socially distance children and, and other individuals. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Emma Atkinson. Monroe County schools were closed Friday and won't reopen until March 27th. The district says school officials were notified Thursday that families have been exposed to others displaying symptoms of the coronavirus. MCCSC says the closure is necessary to minimize exposure and to clean all buildings and buses. Like in Avon, Monroe County students are also using contingency learning plans. But while many districts have the ability to hold classes remotely, about one in five schools in Indiana do not. Among those searching for a potential, potential solution is Monroe Gregg School District in Monrovia. My colleague Brock Turner has more on the challenges rural schools face amid growing coronavirus concerns. 
While there aren't any confirmed cases in the district, they are keeping a close eye on the situation. Avon, which has multiple confirmed COVID-19 cases, is less than half an hour away. While it was initially a surprise to have the virus so close, the district says it's taking the threat seriously. This is an ever-evolving process because, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that, um, that, that Avon had to put a plan in place pretty quickly. I, I think you're, our plan for dealing with it now as it stands, having no students or staff or adults or anyone in the community affected by this virus, I'm happy with the plan that we have in place. Monroe Gregg School's teacher and communications coordinator Mark Janes says the district's maintenance and custodial staffs are already taking steps to ensure spaces stay clean. That's along with providing more wipes and sanitizers, but he says it's hard not to be reactive. Clearly this coronavirus uh, has caused most of the world to be reactive because most of the world was ill prepared for this. Um, but I think, you know, um, we have a, a pretty effective team in place that's going to look at, okay, how will athletic events be uh, affected? How will our food service be you know, affected? Uh, how will our transportation be affected? In rural districts like these, decisions carry additional burdens. While suburban and urban districts usually have reliable internet access, not all residents here do. That's kept administrators from embracing one-to-one -one technology. And the lack of coverage is something that could end up affecting students. The fact of the matter is that e-learning is not something that's currently available to our district. And so if, if we had an emergency situation that would require schools to, our schools to perhaps postpone classes or cancel classes for a period of time, uh, I, I believe our option would be, unless we could get an emergency waiver from the state uh, that would allow us to come under that, you know, 184 day guideline, we would certainly uh, be in a position where we would simply add days uh, to the end of the year once the, the concern and once the threat had passed. In addition to the challenges associated with e-learning, the district is also concerned about how students will receive meals if they do have to close. While Avon has established a plan to keep providing students with meals, officials here say many parents drive from long distances. Plus, many work during the day, so coordinating such an effort becomes complicated quickly. Despite those challenges, Janes believes the district is prepared, and he wants to reassure parents that student safety is their number one priority. We'll be ready using the guidelines that the state has already provided us uh, in the event that we do have someone who tests positive for that virus. We'll, I, I think we'll have an effective way to, to handle that. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Brock Turner. And the governor announced a new, a new number of new measures yesterday to help slow the spread of the coronavirus, among them allowing Indiana schools to close for 20 days for the rest of this school year. Now, Holcomb is also discouraging non-essential gatherings of more than 250 people in sight, such, such as churches, stadiums, auditoriums. The announcement came as the NCAA and the Big Ten called off basketball tournament games scheduled for Indianapolis. And then a worker at Fiat Chrysler's transmission factory in Kokomo tested positive for the coronavirus. Now in Indiana, there are no confirmed cases of the virus on a university campus, but nevertheless, colleges across the state are moving classes online. Indiana University says the school is doing everything it can to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. In-person classes won't resume until after the first week in April. Faculty and staff are being encouraged to work from home and students studying abroad are being brought home. As Adam Pinsker reports, one of the first things the university did was restrict travel. Gabe Kurtz was supposed to be flying to South Korea for spring break as part of a Kelly School of Business sponsored trip, but the coronavirus changed all that. It's unfortunate my spring break plans got canceled. Um, it, it, we got to be safe, you know, like this is this is something more serious than we thought it would be in the beginning. Kurtz was supposed to be studying the world of autonomous driving cars with students at a university in Seoul. The trip has been rescheduled for August. Kirsch says he'll be on the trip, but some of his classmates won't. I have some friends that are doing internships over the summer, and so they're not able to reschedule uh, during the summer. The Republic of Korea is among dozens of countries with confirmed cases of the coronavirus. IU made the decision to cancel all international trips last week, and this week expanded that to domestic sponsored trips as well. IU spokesperson Chuck Carney says the university is acting in the best interest of those scheduled to travel. We felt like this was a prudent decision. It's one that 
colleges and universities around the country are grappling with as well, and we just felt like this was the right move that we had to make at this time. Carney says the university is working with students to help them get reimbursed for their expenses. They also are figuring out details to make sure the students can make up the coursework. It's a rapidly changing situation, but Carney says IU is trying to stay ahead of the virus. We started having meetings at Indiana University back in mid-January about this, when it was still located in Wuhan province in China, because you could see at that point that this was going to be something that could potentially spread worldwide. Carney says any IU student or staff member who comes into contact with someone who has coronavirus will have to self-quarantine themselves away from campus. The same is true if they travel to a country where there is a virus outbreak. Meanwhile, Hirsch says he wasn't that worried about the coronavirus when the pandemic first started, but now that it's altered his travel plans, the virus has his attention. Got to admit, I'm a lot more scared than I was going in. You know, it's, it's sounding pretty bad, but, you know. What can I do? For Indiana News Desk, I'm Adam Pinsker. Health officials say don't panic about coronavirus. Anna Bento is professor in IU School of Public Health in the Department of Epidemiology and Bio Studies. She sat down for an interview with our Adam Pinsker, and Bento called the panic the enemy of an emerging virus situation. What are the symptoms that one would show if they have tested positive for COVID-19? So it actually can range from asymptomatic individuals that absolutely have no symptoms uh, to uh, mild symptoms that are similar to uh, the seasonal cold, which in fact is also a coronavirus, um, which means sneezing and coughing uh, to more moderate symptoms that include fever and feeling um, like you need to be lying down, so it's sort of like physical pain like you would have with the flu, um, and then progressing to more serious symptoms like pneumonia, needing people to get hospitalized. And of course, unfortunately, there are some subset of the population uh, who are in fact um, dying, but l let's not panic so much about that. So those are individuals that are older um, and or had had some already uh, immunosuppression situation. So for somebody with a compromised immune system. Exactly. So you can have this disease, this virus right now and show zero symptoms, you can be walking around with it and not even know it. Yes, absolutely. So that's one of the concerns, which is even though, uh, for instance, there are countries that are not yet reporting it, uh, even though there are countries around it that are reporting quite a lot, for instance, let's say, uh, Italy has a, a, an enormous amount of cases, but the surrounding countries I, are either with much lower cases or with zero reported cases. And we see the same in the US, right? We see the same. Initially, we were seeing cases in California, in Washington state, and then we started seeing this trickling uh, effect of other, other individuals and in other states reporting it. But the situation is it's very likely that there are individuals that are uh, not going to the doctor or actually not feeling any symptoms enough to, to appreciate that they're indeed infected. At this point, it's going to take how long to find a vaccine and make sure it's, it's usable for everybody? So um, that's always a tricky question, right? So there's three or four labs uh, that are currently working on a vaccine. There's two vaccines that are more advanced, uh, but the reality of any sort of like uh, treatment, uh, like a vaccine, is that even though the vaccine is being developed at lightning speed, because of the trials that a vaccine needs to go through, immun immunogenicity and safety, it means that we actually won't have a deployable vaccine in about a year, and that would be super fast, probably a year, a year and a half. Has anybody actually recovered from this virus? Many, it... many have recovered. The country that has the most recovered is China, uh, simply because it was the country where first cases appeared. So the first reported cases started trickling in November, now we know, right? Even though that we only started realizing that this virus was circulating uh, at the end of, of December, the beginning of January. So now we have uh, in the hundreds of people that have recovered. Uh, in the US, I think there's uh, maybe below 10 individuals that have recovered. And all over Europe, uh, we do have individuals that have recovered. So most people recover, right? Uh, very few individuals, 
even though it's, it's something that we should worry about, but very few individuals die. Most people run the course of the disease and then recover. Many epidemiologists are saying the U.S. is past the point of containment. One reason is because of the slow rollout of diagnostic testing. That is why the focus has now shifted to managing the virus. If you take a look at this graphic based on one created by the CDC, it shows the importance of trying to slow down the rate of infection so the healthcare system can keep up. The blue line you're looking at is the capacity of the healthcare system. The yellow curve shows the prevalence of cases without measures to slow the rate of infection. And then the purple curve shows how the cases can be spread out over time with preventative measures. Very important. I've been seeing that everywhere online. Stay with us. Coming up, the Director of Emergency Services at IU Health Bloomington Hospital joins us on set. And the federal government is urging manufacturers to ramp up production of face masks, but that's having little effect locally. These stories and more right here on Indiana News Desk. The WTIU WFIU News Team connects Indiana to the world. We bring you the top news of the day on radio, TV, and online. We round up the stories that have people talking each week and dig deep into the issues that affect your community the most. The WTIU WFIU News Team is where you are and telling your story. In a time of change, where can you find in-depth reporting and thoughtful analysis? Washington Week on PBS. Join moderator Robert Costa. When I was at the Capitol this week, I encountered the same... And a panel of award-winning journalists. You're seeing a divided nation and you're seeing... For insights and perspective. Tonight there was a key development in the You Senate won't find anywhere else. What a week. Washington Week. Welcome back to Indiana News Desk. Well, the U.S. is bracing for a coronavirus outbreak, and like we've been saying, taking steps to slow the spread of the virus. But in other countries like Italy, it didn't take long for the coronavirus to quickly overwhelm the health care system. And many are warning the same thing could happen here. Katie Howe is the Director of Emergency Services at IU Health Bloomington Hospital. She joins us now. Thank you so much. For You're, being welcome. Here today. You're welcome. So just what's the atmosphere? What's the scene right now at the hospital? Well, I would say that we are very busy um, preparing for patients and any of those um, in our community needing our help or in the state of Indiana. You know, we saw that flattening curve graph mm -hmm. earlier. Do you, is there a plan to potentially in place help more people if needed? Yes, so we've been planning for actually uh, months, um, just keeping an eye on everything. Um, and we definitely have our incident command center in place, um, which allows us to kind of take inventory of how many beds we have available, ventilators, and not just here in Bloomington, but across the state. So it's definitely a united force um, to make sure that we have everything in place. Mm -hmm. Here's a question I think I've been hearing the most is, is the hospital actually testing people? So currently, um, everything is vetted through uh, the Indiana State Department of Health. Um, so we screen the patients and we do initial testing that may help rule out other viral things such as influenza or um, strep throat. Um, and then we do a, a respiratory viral panel to see if anything else comes up. Once we're at that point, if all of those tests come back negative and the patient, you know, there is concern that they've had contact with someone who's been diagnosed um, and confirmed with COVID-19, um, then we would go ahead and contact the state and um, send off for that testing. And then in the future, we're hoping to have um, the kits available um, because right now there is a shortage. You know, there's not enough available for as many people that want to be tested. So we're having to really, really um, screen that, yeah. make sure we're getting the right testing to the right people. Of course, we talk a lot about the patients, but what about mm -hmm. medical staff? Are there special uh, procedures going in place right now for them? Yeah. Absolutely, so we have um, special places in our ED here in Bloomington that we are placing suspected COVID-19 um, patients um, and people that we're worried about. So they are kind of in a different area than our normal regular emergency department um, patients. 
Um, we have all of our healthcare workers are provided with protective um, equipment um, and that's changing too. Uh, just in the last 24 hours, the CDC has changed it from airborne isolation to droplet and contact isolation, which means that there's um, different masks that we would need to wear and, and, and different donning of that protective equipment, so. Boy, well, thank you so much for being here. We know yeah. there's there's a lot going on and we'll yeah. continue to get updates from yeah. you as, as we move forward. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Well, since the virus can be spread through the air, masks have been in high demand. Officials say they should really be safe for medical staff. Reporter Mitch Legan visited Bloomington Hardware to see how stores are keeping up with increased demand. Last week, we didn't even get them put up on the shelf. We had them in the tote boxes, and before we could even get them stocked, they were already sold out. Since the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention declared the first case of coronavirus in the U.S. in late February, Bloomington Hardware can't keep up with demand for protective face masks. Typically, this whole wall is filled with some kind of dust masks, respirators, um, anything like that. We are out of everything. We have a couple of replacement filters here, but that is all. Um, and we will be getting some more in, but not a lot. Um, the only thing we do have left are the regular dust masks. These are made for home dust. Even with deliveries three times a week, dust masks and respirators have been selling out before they hit the shelves. And we've also had a lot of students coming in from overseas that are buying them and sending them home to their families. So um, luckily, we don't have a lot of people coming in and buying everything that we have. They're very respectful in making sure everyone can get some. But as you can see, we don't have any right now. She says distributors are limiting the number of masks stores can order. And even then, she's not sure how many she'll get, since vendors can't make them fast enough to meet demand. This week, Hill was hoping for 30 to 60 masks. On most of the respirators, anything that's in 95 and in 100, if it is a item that we regularly stock, we have already surpassed what our 2019 numbers will. Um, some of them by double. Bloomington Hardware was also sold out of rubbing alcohol and hand sanitizer, and disinfectant wipes and surface cleaners are low in stock. Clorox wipes, Lysol wipes, sprays, um, that's another thing that we have seen our warehouses are out of. I know I was looking at just a regular old 8-ounce hand sanitizer this morning. They were negative 1,000 on it. Meanwhile, the U.S. government is urging manufacturers to increase production. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Mitch Legan. Wild swings in the financial markets based on worries about the coronavirus have people on edge about their 401ks and other investments. We asked a financial advisor how concerned people should be. And in the interest of full disclosure and transparency, this Charles Schwab advisor is a financial supporter of WTIU. Jeremy Zeichner has seen this kind of market volatility before. While it can be nerve-wracking, he says it shouldn't cause a panic. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is unprecedented at all. It's, this is stock investing. Um, I think a really good analogy is 9-11. Um, Periodically, there are shocks to the system. Um, and 9-11, you know, terrorists attacked, and we weren't sure what was going to happen next. So people's behavior changed. They stopped traveling. They stopped making certain decisions that they would have made other otherwise. I think this is very similar. Um, there's a, a, a virus outbreak, and it has created uncertainty um, around the world. And people have changed their behavior. Eventually, the virus will be contained. I don't know when that is, but it will. And when that happens, um, the economy will get back to normal. Zeichner says investors should also remember the market has gotten so high that numerical drops are not at all the same as they were in 2008 and 2009, when markets lost nearly 60 percent of their value over 15 months. The market has grown substantially since 2008. So a thousand point sell off today is very different than a thousand point sell off in 2008. It's important to understand the percentages, um, you know, and, and also expand your time horizon. Your starting point is never your highest point. Expand your time horizon and think long term. In other words, consider how your investments have done the last 12 months rather than the last two weeks. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Bob Zaltzberg. And half of Americans age 65 and older report attending religious services at least once a week. Now that puts increased pressure on faith communities because seniors are the most vulnerable to the coronavirus. 
Around Bloomington, churches are grappling with how to prevent the spread of coronavirus among their congregations. Things are essentially continuing as normal at the St. Paul Catholic Center, but the Archdiocese of Indianapolis sent a directive out last week with recommended guidelines, including not receiving communion. People are not obligated to receive communion from the cup. Um, and if people are sick, if they're sick, to, uh, they uh, are not obligated to attend Mass so, so they can stay home um, as an act of charity to protect the health of others. Some other churches have stopped passing out bread and wine and have replaced handshakes with elbow bumps. And we're also getting some closings from churches into our newsroom that are canceling services such as First Christian Church in Bloomington on Sunday. And I think it's very important for people to understand that to remain calm, you know, don't panic. Right. If you're sick or you feel like you're getting sick, call your doctor and the professional medical people They'll take care of you. That's the end of this program, but our work continues online as we cover the news throughout the week at WTIUNews.org. Have a great weekend. Indiana News Desk is made possible in part by Smithville, Fiber Internet, Streaming TV, Home Security and Automation in Southern Indiana. More information at smithville.com. Maller Grodner Attorneys, providing legal services to clients and the community. Understanding, expertise, results. Bloomington and Indianapolis. LawMG.com. IU Alumni Association, connecting IU's network of alumni and sharing the Indiana spirit through scholarships, advocacy, and volunteerism. Alumni.iu.edu. IU Center for Rural Engagement, extending IU Bloomington resources to improve Hoosier lives in partnership with communities and organizations. Rural.indiana.edu. And by WTIU members. Thank you.